My name is Jesse Wolfersberger. I'm the Director of Consumer Insights for Group M Next. Very quickly, Group M Next is the innovation unit of Group M. So we do a lot of research and demos and things like that for our clients. And um, I lead our research, so I brought some of that here. The stuff you're going to see today is fresh off the press. I'm talking, it was done Friday. So I worked on the weekend to get it up here. People on my own team haven't seen the data you guys are going to see today. So there you go. Like I said, we're going to have some fun, so uh, let's start here. Who likes the onion? Yes, that's the right answer. We're going to talk about shopping. Check this one out. I think that's a good one. Here's another one. This, this, is, this is a good one. Here, here's, so this one doesn't format well. I'll kind of do it on my own here. Uh, this is the onion. Uh, benefits of in-store shopping versus online. Benefits of in-store. Toaster buddy more meaningful when fought to death over. Periodic exposure to germs necessary for a robust immune system. Screaming at clerk to unlock video game display case still counts as human contact. Uh, benefits of online. Don't have to use legs. Ability, ability to read 1,600 reviews for a $12 iPhone case. Number of big screen TVs you can buy not limited to size of car. So these are funny examples, but my point here is that there's much truth said in jest. And if you look at the things on the left side of the screen, they're kind of negative. And it, you know, germs and unlocking cases and things like that are not good user experiences. The things on the right are generally positive. They're funny, but you have the ability to read 1,600 reviews if you want to. So that's why I think we're seeing this. So this is straight out of the Mary Meeker presentation, which I'm sure we've all seen that the percent of e-commerce is just headed up and to the right. That's all there is to it. And it will continue to go that way because of all these things that we just talked about. Now, the thing I will kind of take exception with here is that I totally agree with the trend. The trend is headed that direction, no question about it. But that percentage is a little bit hard to define because, I mean, what is e-commerce? Um, sure, you could say it's, well, things bought online, but the influence of digital is crazy. So let's, this is coming out of our survey research here. We asked people, uh, which of these things do you do often? Uh, do you, you know, research in store and buy online? Research online, buy in store? Buy online and research and buy on, online? Research and buy in store? And these are the results. So as you can see, people do a lot of varied um, purchase pathways here. So I just don't think that it's easy to say, well, 10% of uh, shopping or 10% of retail is e-commerce because look at all these cross, you know, digital to offline, offline, offline to online pathways. Um, here's what I think is really interesting too. This idea that, you know, if we had this conference a few years ago, showrooming probably would have been one of the big topics. We just don't find that that's a, a huge thing. People, once they get in store, they're probably either there to purchase the thing they already researched or they're there to walk out with something. They don't want to go leave and then need to wait for it to be delivered. Um, if you break this down by age, it looks like this. So as you can see, the 18 to 34-year-olds do a lot more shopping everywhere, but this is the one that's really key to me. The number one purchase pathway today of people 18 to 34 is to research online and buy in store. So again, that would not be counted as e-commerce, but there's no question that this is digital um, in, a, in a big way. So let's kind of set the stage here. This is the state of retail as we kind of see it and where it's going to go. I can put everything we're going to buy against these two axes. I don't want to shop for it on the left. I do want to shop for it on the right. I need it now at the top. I don't need it now at the bottom. So this will make some sense once I throw some things in here. A couch. I rarely find myself in a couch emergency, so therefore it can wait. Um, but I also want to sit in it, and I want to see it. I want to see how big it is. I want to see if the color matches what I see online. So that's why it goes there. Flip side of the coin, something like this. I, NyQuil, I'm sick. I need it now. I'm dying. Someone help me. So I need it now. But also, is there anything worse than going to the store when you're sick? You've got 10 different varieties of NyQuil much less all the other brands. Like, I don't want to look through all this stuff. Just give me something that makes me feel better. So that's on that. Let's fill it out with a few more things. Paper towels. Who likes shopping for paper towels? Nobody. 
Um, and again, you don't really need it right now. Um, baseball hat. So I know my hat size, so therefore um, I could buy it online maybe, but then again, it feels pretty good to try it on and make sure it looks good. Uh, the other day, my smoke alarm went out. Needed a new 9-volt battery. Don't want to shop for different brands of 9-volt batteries, so that's why it's on the left side of this graph. But also, you know, I kind of need it now. It's not like my house is going to burn down tomorrow, so maybe I could wait. But I don't want to wait for six months either, so that's why it's in that quadrant. And then you've got things like apparel. Jeans, shoes, I would really like to try those on before I buy them. Um, and, you know, I kind of want them now-ish. I don't want to wait for too long, so that's why they're there. Okay, this is kind of the, I could keep going for, you know, everything, every uh, thing in the store, but I'll stop here. This is what's happening. There is a black hole at the bottom left of this chart, and I bet you can guess what it's called. So what Amazon is doing is they're making it so easy and so quick to buy this stuff that everything is getting gravitationally pulled down there. For example, that 9-volt battery. They already, I already told you I don't want to go to the store to get it. I already told you I don't need it right this second. I can wait. Two-day delivery is perfect. It just gets sucked into the hole. Paper towels. No one likes shopping for paper towels. Uh, subscribe and save. It's, I'm just going to have the right amount of paper towels show up to my house every month, every two months, whatever I decide. Sucked into the hole. Now, here's where things get interesting, because those, those, those are Amazon's wheelhouse. We knew about that. Here's where it's interesting. I really don't feel good. I really don't want to wait for two-day shipping for my NyQuil. So you'd, th you'd think that Amazon has no chance at this one, but they have a drone that can deliver it to my house, uh, kind of, it's, it's not in the black hole yet, but it's getting sucked that way. Things like the apparel, the hat, the shoes, the jeans, I told you, I like to try that stuff on, but they make returns really easy. You know, I can, I can maybe buy two or three sizes of the jeans that I think I might like and then return the two out of the three that I don't like. You know, those things are getting sucked in. So they're not quite there yet, but the only way for everyone who is in this room who's not Amazon, which is all of us, is we have to pull these things back out. So we're gonna talk about how to do that. I can see four ways to compete with Amazon. Price, convenience, speed, experience. Uh, let's run through some of the ones that uh, are not gonna work. Price. Here is a Google trend of the term compare prices versus the term Amazon going back 10 years. So what has happened here is, you know, in the early days of e-commerce, we all started buying things online. We all thought the future was going to be sitting at our computers going, it's amazing, guys. You can search and look at uh, prices at three different stores without ever leaving your house. And people stopped doing that because Amazon won that battle so often that they just became, you know, the low price de facto winner and people stopped checking. There's a lot of articles out there now that say Amazon does not even have the lowest prices that many things, but because they are sort of synonymous with that term now, you really can't compete with them there. So in order to compete on price, you'd have to do two things. You'd actually have to beat them in price, which, good luck, may or may not even be possible the way they're structured, and you'd have to change the public perception that, you, that they have the lowest price. So you'd have to be a sort of a hearts and minds campaign. So the grade I will give that one is this. No thanks. Okay. Convenience and speed. These are some interesting ones. All the stuff you guys are very savvy, you know about all the stuff that Amazon's doing in these situations. The dash button, you can hit a button, and on your way, on the way to your house will be one of these items. Uh, also the Amazon Echo. I don't know if anyone's played with one of these yet. They're very cool. Uh, the voice recognition's very good. So the goal here is to add things to a shopping list as quickly as possible, with just your voice. And speed, we know that they're doing same day delivery, Amazon Fresh, and of course the drones, which everyone has been talking about. So we live in a world today where depending on your zip code, you could just say to the world, buy me some peanut butter, and that peanut butter will be at your house later that day. That's pretty amazing. And we live in a world very soon where you say, buy me some peanut butter to your Amazon Echo, and it'll be there in an hour or less. So I don't think these things are slam dunks. There's a lot of consumer adoption that has to go along with this stuff. 
Um, and I think that they're still, these are the things they're trying to do to compete with the brick and mortars. Um, but brick and mortars still have kind of the trump card, which is we have stores that you can go to. So the grade I will give these for if this is going to work or not, uh, I'll give it this. I don't know. We'll see. I think they're doing some interesting things. Uh, we'll see if consumers adopt the stuff or not. Okay. So that leaves the last one, which obviously was where we're going to go the whole time, experience. Uh, finally, this is the realm where we can win. This is the realm where we get to be Minute Bowl, and they have to be Muggsy Bogues for once. Anyone know who, how tall Minute Bowl is? 7'7", seven, seven, excellent. And I would assume that you know that when you go to the internet to search for pictures of, Muggsy, of uh, Minute Bowl, you can't stop at one. This is him in high school. Yeah, that's, yeah, the hockey ones are good, too. So, anyway, we're going to talk about experience. Okay, one more. We're going to do one more Manute Bowl pitcher. <laughs> and then, I think this is a good one for the pitchers. Like, a picture of me, like, giving this presentation. When they'll see it, then I go, what was, all, what was he talking about? <laughs> okay. So, from here on out, I'm going to give some data points from our research about things that people are excited about, people, uh, the future of retail shopping, and then we're going to talk about some examples. So, for example, 74% of people are excited to use virtual reality technology while shopping. This was the highest rated technology that we surveyed. A good example of this today is the North Face in their store. They're partnered with a company called Jaunt. Um, and they have climbed a bunch of mountains with this virtual reality technology, the cameras. And you can go to the store, try on their clothes, try on their shoes, um, and put yourself on the top of a mountain and see how it feels to be on top of a mountain with their shoes on. So that is an example of something that will get me to the store um, to buy some apparel. How about this one? 69% of people are excited to use augmented reality. This was the second highest technology we asked about. So this is, in my example, this is a company called Face Cake Swivel. All right, who's going to call me on it? This is not Face Cake Swivel. This is, uh, this is Clueless from 1995. Face Cake Swivel looks like this. So you get to swipe, and you try different clothes on quickly. It's very cool. I recommend you look it up. This is going to be big for in-store stuff. This was really interesting. Of all the things we kind of asked about, this was the one that was most um, surprising to me. So uh, to kind of take a little derail here, uh, we asked people, we gave people a bunch of different kinds of stores and said, which of these stores would you go to first based on these attributes? And these are the results. Oh, let me go back here. 67% are excited to have a personalized experience with associate. So uh, almost as high as the virtual reality, augmented reality stuff. Okay, here's that poll that I was talking about. The number one answer would be the store that's closest to my house. No surprise. Number two is the store that you are a member of their loyalty club. Again, not surprised there. Third is the store with the most helpful employees. That's really interesting to me because I, you know, for years we've been at conferences and reading articles saying people wanted to avoid human contact. Uh, that may not be true. It's just maybe that those associates weren't good at what they did or they didn't have the right kind of information. So I think that's going to be an interesting one. So here's a good example of that. Lily Pulitzer, if you have their app, you can insert all your information. Then when you go talk to an associate, they have access to all your information. And you can check out with the associate instead of, just go, instead of going to the cash register. So that's a good example. Uh, here's another one that I found is really interesting in our survey. Remember this? This was uh, a few slides ago. Number one, new, number one pathway of 18 to 34 is uh, shopping online, buying a store. 62% of people have ordered online and picked up something in store. 46% do it at least once a month. That's huge. That's unbelievable. Among the 18 to 34, 74% have ordered online and picked up in store. 63 do it at least once a month. This is a new shopping path that we really aren't optimizing toward yet. And it's kind of amazing because not only are you making these purchases and you're giving people exactly what they want, you're getting them back in the store. So this is more foot traffic. So the example I'll give you for this one, because we all know how to order online and pick up in store, that's not new, um, is kind of the opposite or the converse of this, which is Trunk Club. Where Trunk Club, I don't know if you've heard of it, but they 
we'll send you a bunch of over, overpriced things and then you try them on and then things you don't want you send back at no cost, things you want to keep you can keep. Well, I think this is kind of another good example of why can't we have a trunk club where I can take things back to the store instead of sending it back? Then again, maybe, you know, maybe they sent me a shirt that was not quite the right size and I can go to the store and get, you know, a different size. So adding foot traffic to the store. Okay. So those are the examples. Running out of time here. Um, this was the quadrants I brought up before. Here's kind of where the end game is going to be. This I need it now and I can wait is going to basically disappear because the timing of things is going to be so quick between drone delivery, 3D printing, all that stuff, that stuff is just going away. So now the future of retail is going to be these two things. Every shopping, everything you buy can be classified as I don't want to shop for it or I do want to shop for it. And these are sort of two magnets that are pulling things to the side. And Amazon is pulling more things right now towards the I don't want to shop for it uh, than the stores are. But very quickly, the stores will get into a I do want to shop for it, make the experience worth the trip, let me let beat Amazon on experience, and you've got these two pulls. Uh, that's basically all I have. I will give you one more, because I find this is kind of interesting too. That if I had 15 more minutes, I could go on about loyalty. Remember earlier, the closest to your house, loyalty club and employees? Well, loyalty club's number two. Um, this is the current landscape from our survey. Amazon Prime is the most loyalty club members, and you know there's some familiar faces on this list. What's interesting here is that while Amazon's winning this, they're not dominating. It's not like a lot of the other stats we see about Amazon where they have 80% market share, 90% market share. This is a battle. Um, and it's a battle where only even the winner only has 30% of people. So there's a lot of, lot of room here. And the Walmart savings catcher um, has more velocity. There's more new members. So the new members is defined here as people who have joined in the last 12 months. Almost half of the people who are a member of this club have joined in the last 12 months. So they've got more velocity than Amazon Prime. So I think this is really a, an interesting space to uh, look at over the next couple of years. So that's my time. Uh, my name's Jesse. Feel free to email me or tweet me. Thank you. Mm -hmm.